So, what is this? So this is the Venicel foam, and we're gonna be making a splitter today. I basically split this in half, because I can't find a piece of foam that's this long. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you, as, soon, as long as these two pieces are lined up correctly, it'll, uh, it'll infuse fine and be super strong. So I've marked out and designed half of it. So all I need to do now is basically uh, copy this into this one. And then you just like match them up together and you'll have one whole splitter? Yep. This way they're symmetrical as well, which is nice. I guess I should show you. So we finished the, the scoop that directs air away from the wheel and then the little mini scoops as well. Um, oh yeah, that's these will be left off. And they're gonna be glued in here actually. You can bolt them in, but I'm gonna try actually uh, gluing them in and see how that works. So I guess the big one that you made is gonna go right here? Yep. Okay. Yep, the big scoop. And then I'm actually gonna put a, a, uh, an actual streak in the middle of it to help send even more out that way. Cause this is, I made this piece so big, it's almost acting like a straight tunnel and a curved cause it's so wide. It's got a lot of uh, surface area. <laughs> so this is the driver side scoop. So this, uh, since I've carved the underside of this, it's, oh, okay. like it's got like a, a little bit, and this is curved to match that. Yeah. So this actually slides in here like that. And so the wheel's about right here. Well, no, sorry, about right here. So this is actually gonna take a lot of this air and curve it and shoot it away from the outside of the tire. So that's the design. And then this guy's gonna sit on the outside here. The lip comes right here. Yeah. Don't worry about that line. But so that's the lip right there. So this is all hanging out on the outside. And that'll have a actual end plate here. And then I'm actually gonna connect it with that little mini. Uh, gurney flap? The little airfoil that we made. Oh. I'm gonna put a gurney flap on this one at least. This one kind of has one built into it already. But I cut this one at an angle to match this. So we're gonna do the exact same design on the other side as this, just obviously reversed. And I have the other pieces in there I still need to cut. But today we're just really focusing on that. And like we were talking about the underside, so this is the top side. The top side is gonna be carbon. I think I'm gonna try to use the 12K carbon just cause it's really thick and I can use a single sheet. Mm -hmm. but then the underside is gonna be carbon Kevlar to try and mitigate some of the, yep. It's gonna get, yeah, it's gonna get scraped. Um, and so, that at least can uh, mitigate a little bit of the uh, abrasion that happens. So will you be using this, I guess, as like your main mold? Or? Well, so, so say if, if I'm gonna make another one of these for someone else, mm. it's so easy to design these, I can just make it off of like a, a front bumper template or yeah. anything. Um, and as long as you know where your wheel placement is and everything like that, you can you can design it pretty easily. But I would be doing this probably separately every single time. Oh, okay. So this is gonna be in the actual piece. For All of this foam is gonna be inside. Support? Yeah, okay. so it'll be a core material. So it'll be a piece of carbon, this foam, and then a piece of Kevlar, carbon Kevlar on top, on the bottom. Um, and this should be super strong. Like we should be able to stand on this when we're done. Um, and I'm gonna try to make it strong enough that I don't need actual rod support ends to go out. So I'd like it to be easy to take on and off. Especially if we're gonna drive it on the street at all, like this thing's gonna get destroyed. Yeah. So I'd like to be able to just pull it off. <laughs> especially these Baltimore streets. Yeah, especially. But, um, so yeah, first thing we want to mimic this on here, cut it out, and then I'll obviously be shaving the reverse side of it. And this stuff you can actually, uh, you can get 3D profiles out of it. So if you heat this stuff up mm -hmm. with like a heat gun, you can, uh, you can shape it and it'll keep its shape.
Okay, so the other thing that we've done, so the top half is gonna be carbon. This is basically gonna be flipped around when we infuse it though. So the bottom half of the infusion or the top half of the park is gonna be completely flat. That's why I haven't sanded any of these edges or anything. But the bottom half, since you want it to basically act like a, a wing element, you want the front half to be curved in to let a little bit more air flow underneath it. And the same with the back. I don't have much of a back end that's not taken up by scoops and that center section is gonna go right into the floor. So I didn't really sand too much at the back, but this is essentially the back end of that airflow. So the whole front end, the top half right here, this is a sharp 90, but underneath has been beveled in and I've made sure that they matched in the front. So you can see like everything's curved. So when air hits this, hopefully it'll direct more under than it does over. But. Oh, you smart. I thought you did that so you didn't scrape your leg. If you walk too close. No, this is gonna make it sharper actually. <laughs> so, watch out. But um, I'm, I'm curious as to what it's gonna look like because the carbon Kevlar is gonna come up around this lip and this is where they're gonna meet. So you're gonna see a little bit of the yellow. Which might be cool. Could you just technically paint it black? Yeah. Why would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> but so I'm gonna use a piece of 12K on the top, carbon Kevlar on the bottom. And then there's a couple companies that make uh, little tiny scrapers basically. So, and they're usually made out of titanium to be like really light, but they, you would mount them at the very like leading edge, like wherever your lip is most prone to scraping. Um, and you can mount them underneath. Um, I know Professional also sells them as like, they're like a teardrop mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And they sell stuff similar to these, but they're plastic. And I think I can, re I can create these for the same exact cost to the end user, but I can make them a carbon. So. so what I might honestly do is get some pieces of, I'll see how much it costs, but I might get some pieces of titanium cut out to be able to run kind of a similar- Like scrape? Something to scrape it, yeah. And it doesn't really matter the shape, as long as it's not like a flat block, so it's blocking airflow. Mm -hmm. um, it could be a teardrop, it could be an oval. So you just want like enough bump on it to- Yeah, you want enough height on it so when your lip scrapes, it scrapes those instead of scraping the material. But carbon Kevlar, if it does scrape, will negate some of that and will actually, because it's Kevlar is very abrasion resistant where yeah. carbon is not. The, this will be really easy to recreate if anybody wants a really a functional splitter. I guess when all this is set up, you'll have it on your website also? Yeah, yeah, I'll put it on industrygarage.com. Uh, so underneath this is my piece of Alumalite. I've already masked off like a three or four inch border around it and pva would everything else mm -hmm. so there's pva on it so we can start setting up all the stuff for a vacuum bag and again it's going to be flipped over so it's going to be carbon first for those that are new to the channel pva is just a release film yeah it's almost like uh like cellophane when it's fully cured it's a really thin thin sheet so your part doesn't stick to your mold this isn't technically a mold, it's just a piece of flat aluminum. Okay. And it is water soluble, so you wash it away. So I'm gonna do an infusion. I'm gonna go from front to back, actually.
you some nice shears. Subscriber sent me those. Some guy that hit me up on Instagram. His family makes them. Like wolf something. I was looking for the message. I'm sorry, man. I can't find it. Because <laughs> it was a while ago. I think he said that they supply scissors to fiberglass. Like the... can't find the small blue ones that I usually use. Oh, yeah. So what's the difference between those and these green ones? I'm honestly not sure. I'm sure he could tell me. Yeah, yeah. But, sorry. I'm a, normal shit feels like a hair. A single hair. Mm -hmm. This is like... Go ahead and make myself a nice little carbon fiber mustache out of this. So I'm adding in another piece of 12K on the bottom, just for the section where I'm actually gonna mount the splitter. Um, and then, so we got our 12K down, two pieces of foam flipped upside down, so this is the bottom. And then this way basically it'll have 12K foam, another piece of 12K, and then carbon Kevlar for the actual surface that's gonna mount. And then this stuff we can just Oh boy, you done got his exquisite bed sheeting material. I take some uh, process bits. The nicest bed sheet you'll ever find. 10,000 count. I'm definitely buying another camera. Because what you just said is very true. Progress pictures, like video is perfect, but you still need some photos. Mm -hmm. What? Who is calling? Saturday, bro. We're on a Saturday, mid quarantine. Entree. We've definitely arrived at Tim's favorite part of the process. As oh, we man. all know. Do you mind holding this up for a second, actually? He is a. I just wanted to drop on the floor and get all done. In this phase of the process, it's all about the preparation. Make sure you have a good base plant. So when do you, how do you know when to use this and when not to use it? Um, well, you always want to use this okay. when you're doing infusions. It, it gives the resin somewhere to, to go. Like it, it clears the path for it. So it gives a little bit of height on this versus the other stuff where it can actually move through. So I'm cutting slits in it to keep this from creating like an air bubble in it so it can curve with all the other materials. Oh yeah. Shut thank you. Remember, your bag is folds in half. Or it's already folded in half. Made that mistake. Yes. <laughs> so all you need to do is find out how much material you need. None of the wrinkles cross. Because that'll obviously let some air in. And also, these junctions are always where it's going to leak first. Here or where you have pleats. And actually, before I go too much further, I need to make the. I need to make the ports. So you've seen us use this stuff on the other infusions we've done. This basically lets the resin enter the system and spread out evenly along this tube. ports yeah so one port lets the resin in oh yeah yeah, since yeah. It's all I forgot dry. about that the science fair project
switching off between turning the vacuum on, moving it a little bit over, sucking that down, holding it, turning it back off, moving it a little bit this way. It's just basically pulling all the material so it'll be all flat here and can conform to all the curves without having like a pocket between it. This works pretty well, it just takes a little bit of time. I'm using the back end of a spreader because it's soft, I'm not gonna cut the bag, but it's firm enough on the edge I can get a good bit of pressure in it. Just for speed, I marked the four to one ratio on the cup. Really important process, always have enough resin. I'm glad I ran this as long as I did. Uh, yeah. Because it's like, uh, because you can see where it all is going to end up, it'll actually pull it hopefully pretty evenly. You don't want it to, like the center to arrive here and start sucking out resin right away. You're going to lose a lot of resin and keep dumping in there until the rest comes around. But. Well, are we live? We We're live. Live from afar. So I'm going to stay here and let Xavier run. It's going to be like another 45 minutes, maybe 30 minutes until it's completely pulled everything. And then all I'm going to do is cap this off wait until tomorrow and then I'll uh, I'll record myself just debagging the whole thing. We did actually find a small leak. I think I created it from using the spreader, but we had a small leak here. But I'm sure you'll see in the time lapse it'll be us just poking <laughs> at that corner for now. But um, yeah. All in all, pretty good so far. Just slow. You can see where it, the two pieces are separate it ran through the small little crack in between them faster than the rest of them. It's pretty awesome. Well, so I guess we'll catch you tomorrow. Yep. It's much bigger than I expected. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now looking at it in carbon, like when it was just a piece of foam, I was like, it'll do the job. And what, it's within the, the rules, so I'm good. What have you learned with the making this? Um, so in the future, well, one, so when I, I didn't even film us taking it out of the mold, mm -hmm. but uh, the underside of it, there you can see this like weird pattern right here. The foam I use is actually a little bit too thick. They sell Divinacel foam that has little slits cut in it. So the resin can penetrate it easier. So the, the these sections it didn't penetrate fully. So I had to come back and put more resin in them and then sand it flat and all that. Other than that, cutting the carbon Kevlar. Yeah, how did that go? Like, did you have to use a special blade for that or? I just use the same stuff I've always been using, but, but it frays up a lot. So then you have to like go down to like a lighter grit and sand it, but you can get it. It just takes more time. But doing it again, I don't think I really need to cut and shape these holes beforehand. For the scoops? Yeah, for the scoops, I think I can just, uh, I would like to have it flipped so the underside is down against the table mm -hmm. because then that makes the underside the smoother panel. Oh, okay. So I cleared, I matte cleared the underside of my, the Kevlar side of my splitter like two times. So it's, it's at least smooth enough. But um, for any of you guys, if you want me to make one of these for you, I'll do it in reverse. So the top will be like the dry carbon look more so, and the bottom will be glossy, shiny carbon. That'll be the side that'll actually be hitting against. I'll probably try to find a big piece of glass I can use too to make me even. Mirror finish? Yeah, pretty much. Because you have to add, you have to add any more scoops or? Um, so the inner scoops are not in right now. Let me close this door. So oh. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> hasn't run at all all day, but as soon as we start filming, it's it now kicks cranking on. on. Yep. Um, so the, the outer scoops I have on right now, um, that one I've already cut to the correct angle. This one's just still straight. And 
I've actually figured out the those little fender pieces that I'm making mm -hmm. that we showed in the other video. Someone actually commented on this in the last 240Z video. Well, actually, that'd be like three from now now. But um, he was he was wondering why I don't have a scoop in this side, an air scoop. I after measuring this scoop, I realized that it would be perfect to sit right in here. So that's why I didn't put it in the fender because I was planning on making the fender and then just using that scoop from the back side, cut it out from the front and then epoxy it in. Um, it'll just be less work and I'm not gonna be mass producing these fenders, it's just for my car, especially because it's got a specific bump out for the exhaust. And then the other day, someone ran over the other <laughs> side. So I spent all that work making that really nice scoop. I bought that bottom piece. I mean, at least you got video to reminisce and yeah. look back at it. Yeah, so I spent all that time making that other fender on that side and then someone ran over it. Yeah, it sure. Shop, it's so. definitely squished. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who did it, but I don't even care. It's, it's squished, so it doesn't matter. Um, so I gotta buy another one of those, but whatever. We're gonna keep rolling. The next thing we're gonna do is the diffuser. Mm -hmm. We got that rolling. We just messed with that today, but you'll see that in the next episode. Actually, what we're gonna do next is gonna be gluing these guys in, because right now they're just chilling. They're just they're very tight. Yeah, I mean, for what it is, it's, and they're pretty good. Yeah. So, we're gonna glue those in, and then obviously the, this isn't mounted right now either, it's just on some two by fours. But the inner scoops that wick the air out this way, they're not in. And uh, we're actually gonna do the chassis mount. Yeah, I would say, how are you gonna well. go about mounting this? Yeah, so it'll it'll actually be mounted without the front lip on, but it'll there's these two little guides that slide in, and all it does is take a little pin that actually holds it on there. So it's a quick release, and it also will be mounted so far forward. It'll be mounted up as far as I can to still um, still hide underneath this lip, um, and I'm hoping that that will be enough rigidity to keep it where it is. So I don't have to have any other strakes or any uh, splitter rods or anything like that. But we'll see. If I need to, then I need to. And it's not that One major cool thing about this, you get security. People can't get all up on your engine bay. True, but one big drawback is it's really hard to take on and off my hood. Now. Yeah. Because I'm like leaning over. <laughs> yeah, I can only get this close. Oh yeah. You get, you get the idea. Yeah, so that's the, the outcome of the splitter. I'm super happy with it still. It is like crazy strong. Yeah, I no, can't I wait to get this mounted so we can start standing on it and doing other stupid things <laughs> for no reason. Um, but yeah, so next video, we're gonna glue all these guys in. Then we got diffuser coming, flat floor, finishing up the fenders once I get that new one in and do all that craziness. And then I'm gonna use one of these same scoops. And then I have the this bad boy over here. We're gonna be making. Oh, that's for the vents for yeah. fenders and stuff like that. And then we got even more stuff. Um, yeah, that's all. I don't know. Got nothing else. Buy this shirt. <laughs>